Welcome to Once More With Feeling, Artist Special, this time around being joined by the artist of the album in question, which is Nexus, by artist Sky Wolf. Hello there. So yes, this was pretty much a case of finding out about the album being released, you giving me the link, and I, I just thought this album needs to be covered. <laughs> it was a... um. It was a uh, a chance encounter, really, because I I just literally got the album. The album has been released for about a month or so now, and I only just got my first sale on it. So I thought I'd broadcast that on Facebook, and the rest is history, really. Mm. I mean, I've I've posted it posted about it in the group for music geekery, and uh, I was sort of like, this is the album that's being reviewed you'll probably want to give it a listen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, probably should go into what... I mean, I know what I'd classify it as, but what would you personally say it falls into genre-wise? Um, it, I I say it falls in the category of synthwave slash retrowave music. Mm. Uh, there's a big underground scene for it at the moment of music that is designed to sound like 1980s music. Yeah. A big massive revival in it. Yeah, I mean I could definitely hear all the 80s influences and at points it was sort of on occasions getting Blade Runner-esque vibes from it. Um, also getting sort of, funnily enough Ghost in the Shell feels and um, uh, just the general sort of aesthetic from 80s synthwave definitely bled through how the album progressed. Mm-hmm. Um, what were the primary influences for the album? Well, I've been listening to uh, synthwave for about three years now, mm-hmm. and I have found um, there are. I've, I've not found a track that I don't like from p- particularly from this uh, genre. Mm. And when I started off making music, my my um my main influence was 1970s uh kraut rock and Berlin school uh mm. electronic music. Yeah. And I could never really get on with it. I couldn't really make my track sound very very boring. And then I heard this uh, artist who's uh, prolific on in in synthwave uh called George Bishop. And his music in particular just really 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 spoke to me yeah so i basically went out of my way to try and emulate that you know emulate that kind of sound and in doing so i kind of developed my own sound and for once the techniques that i was using was gelling quite nicely Mm. yeah i mean it's unusual for me to find an album like this where there doesn't seem to be anything out of place. It all flows very nicely. Uh, and I kind of got the feel of maybe this is just me interpreting it this way. Maybe that was the intention. But I kind of had the feel of a bit of a concept album. You would be absolutely correct. There is a concept there. It is a, It is definitely a concept album. Uh, basically... As the album progressed and I was getting more and more tracks towards it, um, the concept kind of developed and it tells the story of a person who somehow becomes uploaded into into cyberspace, into a nexus. Right. And basically the album explores uh, this person's journey throughout, the, uh, throughout cyberspace and throughout nexus. And this entity's longing to escape as well because no matter how lovely it is in there you know because this this person can do anything he wants in there or she mm. uh they can do anything they want in this uh, particular well dimension really mm. but it's not quite life hence hence one of the track names synthetic heaven mm. 
So I'm guessing. Uh, I'm, I, I like to think that the character tries to escape from uh, from from the uh, from the dimension because they just miss their life. Yeah, I I can roll with that. Um, is that is that the driving reason for the use of the samples in the opening track? Yes, yes. Um, basically, in the first track, uh, the samples were to signify just mundane mundane life everyday life this person goes to work hears the same old stuff every single day and then gets sucked in mm. gets sucked into the nexus yeah um i was curious where where were those samples drawn from <laughs> um basically um putting youtube into my phone plugging the phone into the mixer and then like finding these uh stock stock videos on how to do customer service on a telephone ah. and then pressing play and then editing that way I, it works really well it i was very intrigued when when the track opened and just hearing sort of these call centers mm -hmm. style things and there was i was just sort of like okay i'm intrigued tell me more and I also find that the first track is also a little bit of a break from the uh, from the from the rest of the tracks as well because I, I don't know if you noticed but most of the tracks are very formulaic. Yeah. However, the first one stands out, and I I think it makes a quite a good intro into the into the story really. Yeah, I think with albums in general, you want to have an opening track that, whilst it presents a standard for the album, it also stands out as an introduction and you definitely managed that it drew me in very quickly um i i think it did help that was first listen i was just uh doing model making just painting and making models and i was able to just let my mind wander with how the music was progressing yeah uh, aside from stargazing, was it all just you doing the recording and instrumentation and everything, or were there other people involved? Uh, no, this was um, all me. Uh, apart from, obviously, apart from the samples on on, on YouTube and, and and my friend in Canada, Adam, doing the guitar on on stargazing, which. Mm. Um, which is a second iteration of that because the original version of stargazing is on my first EP. Ah. So that's where it is. But my friend wanted to um, ask asked if he could like put some guitars on there because he really likes stargazing, and stargazing to a certain extent is it, I, I consider that my epoch. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a dramatic shift in style there. Yeah. I'm sorry, I've gone on a tangent there. <laughs> about no. stargazing. Got on. Go with that tangent. <laughs> Um, Stargazing was the first song that I managed to manufacture that wasn't based around a constant sequence, a constant se a synth sequence. It's mm. that first part, second part, third part. And that was the piece of music that I thought, wow, this really works. This really works. This, this whole method really works for me. Yeah. The progression and just the sound, it's... I find it a very effective close to the album because going with the whole concept side of things, it it kind of it does bring you back to reality a bit and just feels a bit more tangible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm not sure if that was the intention, but <laughs> well, as I say, it was a, it was. It wasn't included in the original ten track album. It was just put on there as a bonus. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, it was just put on there as a bonus. As I as I say, the original was included in Artificial Dream World. Mm. So, um, and that was I think that's the lead track on Artificial Dream World. I think that was the one I had as a as, as the preview track anyway because I'm immensely proud of that. And you certainly deserve to be proud of it. <laughs> Thank you. Um. I do have personal favourites of um, Tokyo Synapse Parts 1 and 2. Um, I just found those to be quite quite mesmerising in a way. And also, um, it was just something... I can't quite put my finger on it, but I really liked how those progressed. Um, 
Tokyo Sun Out Parts 1 and 2, uh, the finale of the album, um, I went out of my way to try and find a track that would be very, very good for um, for a finale. Mm. Um, and I really struggled to find a title for this one as well. It, it, I was I was working on this one before I actually went to see uh, the live action Ghost in the Shell film, <laughs> um, and I was halfway through it, and I was just driving over to the cinema trying to think what what on earth can I call this, and thought oh Tokyo Sonaps, and then I thought well I've always wanted to have a a song in parts mm. as well, so part one came into fruition, and that kind of like inspired part two. Which is quite an odd one as well, as well, really, because part two is not in common time. It's in it's in triple time, mm-hmm. so it's like a waltz da, 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 da kind of thing, but same basic chord sequence. Yeah, uh, I mean, you were saying about your personal favourite on the album being Ghost in the Shell. Funnily enough, Ghost in the Machine. Uh, Ghost in the Machine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, you saying about Ghost in the Shell and my brain just <laughs> crossing wires. So, Ghost in the Machine. Uh, basically, that came about... I, I'd gotten down uh, a, a chord sequence for each part of the, of the piece of music. And basically, um, most of my equipment I use is analogue or virtual analogue. However, there is a digital synthesizer that I have from the late 80s that's quite underutilised. Mm. I haven't really managed to get any patches because it's unbelievably hard to programme. Yeah. Like most of the digital synths from the 1980s. Oh lord. <laughs> but there are some uh, presets on there that are absolutely fantastic. So I'm progressing along with this piece of music. I'm you know, really happy. I'm having technical issues as well because I just rewired my studio. And for some reason, some of the uh, some of the simps were just transmitting on on mono, so I had to work my way around that and just try and get things to work. Some things weren't transmitting, and then I realised I was actually playing them on mute. Mm. <laughs> it's a bit of a dumb dumb moment there. Uh, I um, think everyone's had that sort of problem where they just go, <laughs> "Wait, was any of that recording?" And. It was just it was it was a nightmare to record because I had to like re record things twice and some things were recording on mono and so I had to work around that as well. It was just unbelievably frustrating because there was this piece of music and I'm I'm trying to finish it. But I digress. Um I found a patch on my on my digital synth which sounds like angels crying and such like that. Mm. Or um kinda of like ethereal, ghostly kind of kind of sound so I thought yeah. you know what these sound really really good to, to put in here somewhere so I put that in there and I thought to myself what can I call this and uh, it actually reminded me of I think it's the first episode of the X-Files the, it's called Ghost in the Machine mm. and I thought wow that's a really really good title for a, for a track so I've decided to call it Ghost in the, Ghost in the Machine and then I thought wow this sounds quite dystopian quite cyberpunk-esque you know what else do I know it's, and then one of my favourite animes, Ghost in the Shell, you know, thought, do you know what, this would go great with, with Ghost in the Shell. Mm. So, yeah. it's, 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 it's kind of like, the, the, the title Ghost in the Machine is not in any way related to Ghost in the, uh, Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. But has become, you know, that those two have become intrinsically linked because of the style of the music rather than the title. Yeah. I mean, I, I can definitely hear how it would work listening through. I was, I was just thinking this this album would work really well with sort of sci-fi stuff and cyberpunk stuff and just would work really well as game soundtrack kind of stuff, uh, particularly during more introspective moments and downtime moments where you just, you're exploring the world. Yeah, no, I can understand that. I often think of what this album would sound in 8-bit, what Mm -hmm. it sounded as a chip tune. Because I've, I've often, I, I, I like, I do like the sound of 8-bit, that bloopy, uh, that very basic bloopy bloopy sound. Yeah. And I've often wondered what it would sound like if I did it in 8-bit. But, you know, that's, uh, so if anyone wants to, uh, if anyone wants to take a track and 8-bit it, be my guest, you know. Yeah. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, I mean, I've, I've heard various songs done in 8-bit that just make me go, okay. This is quite impressive, and um, it's it's not 
the thing I find about 8-bit as well, I'm, I'm going to geek out at the moment because the thing is with 8-bit, you can always tell because there's only a certain, there's only a finite amount of sounds available in 8-bit, but you mm. can always tell what the inspiration, you know, was it was it an NES kind of uh, sound library or was it um, a Commodore 64 with a SID chip or anything like that, or even Atari, but... <laughs> I don't, I don't actually recall Atari having much music, but uh, Atari was fit, was pretty much just the sound effects and going boom. Oh yeah, the the characteristic uh, Atari explosion. Yeah. So, what are your plans future wise? I suppose uh, future plans really involve. Um, I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing. Mm. Um, I'm. I really enjoy doing what I'm doing. You know, I get an immense amount of satisfaction out of making music. Um, basically, the only reason I ever do it, really, is just because I want to have something new to listen to. And uh, and I think it's the true what they say. You have to like your stuff. You know, if you um, if you don't like your stuff, how can you expect anyone else to like it? Yeah. But um, I have also got a, another album uh it's it's completed it just needs the artwork doing to it and that will be released in november december time it is called sentience um less tracks but longer longer tracks right so uh watch this space and then at the moment i'm currently working on yet another album <laughs> i've already got three tracks done for that so far so oh, cool again watch this space yeah I'll be leaving the link to your Bandcamp in the description and all that, all the necessary gubbins. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I suppose I I should keep with the format of other episodes and give personal rating. Um, I'm... Because I'm in the room with you. <laughs> Don't yeah. let me be biased. <laughs> Don't let me bias your judg- judgment yeah. there. I I mean, it it's one of those. Obviously, some songs are higher rating than others, but mm-hmm. gi- giving a flat rating, I-, I would give it a four out of five. I do feel that you you certainly have your sound pinned down. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just more that you'll be able to do with it. You know, I can I can I can agree with you there. Um, there is certainly a lot of. There are a lot of things that I can do to improve my sound. I mean, for example, there's a track on the album uh, Fiber Optic. Mm. It was my basically my attempt of doing um, On the Run by Pink Floyd, and it just I always when I hear it, I think it just it's, it sounds okay. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's all. That's all. Uh, it is an album that benefits from repeated listens. It's the sort of thing where you hear a lot more the more times you listen to it and you hear various nuances. I mean, I was hearing more in the samples and how they were tied into the overall sound just on sort of like second or third, fourth listen through, that sort of thing. Um, But yeah, you've got a very strong album here and it would be awesome to hear what you come out with next. (laughs) Uh, thank you very much. Um, the next album, without giving away too much, um, it's certainly more experimental. I've been a bit more adventurous with my sounds and such like that, and it is the difficult second album as well. Mm. So I'm really nervous about this uh, this release in particular, but I'm hoping it hits the spot. Yeah, I'll definitely be spreading the word as and when. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, if you feel so inclined, you can come on to the show again and discuss that album. I would absolutely love to. I've had a great time today. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> That's it for this episode. Um, next episode is going to be much more in the standard format. Uh, back with me and Pierce just flabbing our lips about an experimental stuff that we're just going, ooh, this is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> like we almost always do. Yeah, the next review will be the new Mogway album. I uh, don't know if you know Mogway at all. No. Uh, they're sort of a experimental electronica, prog rock, lots of different stuff thrown in there that makes you go, what genre is this? Oh, fuck it, I'll just put experimental. 
I will definitely give it a try. I would yeah. definitely uh, give them a listen to on the next uh, on the next show. <laughs> Weirdly enough, I have yet to hear a song that's Gremlins themed, despite their name. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it for this episode. It's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from me, Skywolf. <laughs>